Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to the very first StarCraft 2 study episode for Heart of the Swarm StarCraft 2 the expansion. Oh yeah! I know there are a lot of people out there that have been waiting for this episode, so here we go. We are going to use the very first episode on none other than Star Till Life's build order in Zerg vs. Stern. And we are going to take a look at the game that he recently played versus Flash during the Heart of the Swarm launch event. Now, for anyone who is either new to StarCraft 2 or maybe hasn't watched it as all, like maybe maybe you didn't watch at all for like the last year or so, and you finally came back to Heart of the Swarm. Well, first of all, welcome back or welcome to StarCraft 2. Second of all, Star Till Life is considered one of the best players in the entire world, period. The guy is incredibly good. He is either considered the best player or the best Zerg, or of course there are a few players that are um, maybe in the same skill level as he is in, but the guy is incredible. I believe he is 16 years old right now and he already won a GSL and MLG. Um, Iron Squid 2, if I'm not mistaken as well, a Blizzard Cup. Uh, he won all kinds of things and uh, mo no most notably, obviously, is the GSL win, which is the biggest Korean tournament um, going on in South Korea, which is pretty damn insane. So, the guy is incredibly good and we are going to take a look at his Zerg vs. Stern build order. Now, before we actually go into the actual game, um, let's talk a little bit about how Zerg vs. Stern has changed in Wings of... or compared to Wings of Liberty. Um, in Wings of Liberty, what you see, what you saw a lot um, early game was a lot of marine pressure, Hellion pressure, or Hellion into Banshee pressure. Um, all that kind of stuff um, is still happening in Heart of the Swarm. However, um, besides those pushes, there is also this new unit that some of you might know about, and it's called the Widow Mine. The Widow Mine is a new unit that is going on right now in Heart of the Swarm, and it's incredibly effective versus early game Zerg. Um, the other thing that you might have also heard about is that they actually changed the meta. The medevac is incredibly good right now as well. Um, it can basically speed through your base within literally seconds and you also will need to counter that. Now, in this build order, um, life actually opts to go for a very early zirkling speed. This is something that we saw a lot at the start of Wings of Liberty as well because it was always very safe versus pretty much everything. Now, at some point in Wings of Liberty, uh, people decided to go for a lot of early command centers or maybe like a little bit of pressure into a command center into Reapers or not into Reapers, into to um, um, Hellions, that is, um, and, you know, it was just falling out of fashion. But right now we are totally, completely back um, to the early gas openers, and I would definitely advise you to do right as life does it. So let's hop straight into the game. So here we are in the actual game, Life is going to be playing versus Flash, one of the best Brood War players of all time, and you can see Life is opening up the build order with a hatchery at 15 supply. He then makes two more drones and starts a gas geyser at 16 supply and then he starts another drone. Now he will save up until 200 minerals and he will throw down his spawning pool. He puts drones instantly into gas and at 17 supply he starts an overlord. At this point Life also realizes that his opponent Flash is opening up with a command center first, however the build order shouldn't deviate too much. As soon as the spawning pool finishes, he starts a queen in his main base as well as in his natural and he also starts one set of zirklings to start scouting around the map. At this point, he just starts making as many drones as he possibly can. Once life hits 100 gas, he actually pulls his drones off of gas and he starts zirkling speed right as he can. At 25 supply, he will start another overlord, just like he did a little bit earlier. As soon as both queens spawns, he will inject with them, however he will not start the second queen right away in his main base, he will however start another queen in his natural right away. Right now what he does is simply make another overlord and drone up as hard as he possibly can. He is going to use overlords and zerglings all across the map to check out what is going on, but he is most and foremost just droning up as hard as he can. He is not going to be making any more zerglings than necessary and at this point he realizes that it is pretty much completely safe. At this point however you will also need to play reactionary. If your opponent still does not have a base down at this very moment in the game, you have to start creating more and more units. As you can see, Life, however, realizes that he is safe and he drones up with 9 more drones. At this point, Life realizes that he is completely safe and that there's not going to be much aggression at all by Flash, and he decides to get a really greedy third base up at the 6 minute mark in the game. Now, if you feel safe yourself as well versus your Terran opponent, I would recommend you throw down your hatchery at your third base around the 6 minute mark yourself as well. Up until this point, Life has basically only been making drones, but he is now going to add drones back into gas as soon as his zirkling speed finished up, and he's also going to start more gas geysers. 
At this point, Life also wants to start double upgrading his melee units and he decides to go for double evolution chamber. Before he starts double upgrading his melee units, however, he does decide to get a lair first. Now at this point, the game becomes incredibly game specific and it's hard to tell what is going on. Just keep in mind that you always need to be playing very responsive. In general, this build order will help you out to open up safely and to transition into the mid game with good upgrades with a relatively early third base and also with some very safe play. So that's pretty much it, it's a pretty damn easy build order to execute, I'm not going to lie, however there is one thing to keep in mind. Whenever you are seeing that the Terran player is going for a lot of early aggression or he is not expanding at all by the 5 or 6 minute mark, keep in mind that you need to start producing units much earlier. A 1rex command center in base um, usually lands at the natural at the 5 minute mark. If you do not see anything at the 5 minute mark, I would advise you to start making units earlier and then after holding the push you go back to the build order and you play it in a similar fashion, just a little bit delayed. Keep in mind that you have to be very responsive as well. you can never just blindly go for a certain build order because you will always need to nullify what your Terran opponent is doing. Now besides that I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, if you did please hit the like button as well as the favorite button as well as leave a comment because I love reading comments and I read every single one of them. So I want to thank you guys all for watching, if you're not subscribed already hit the subscribe button, have an awesome day, do not forget to smile and hopefully I will see you in the next episode. Bye!